Hi there, welcome back to my complete AP Chemistry course. I'm Jeremy Krug, and we are continuing with taking a look at a couple simple atoms here. Now, I have a couple pictures here of these two atoms. We have hydrogen and we have helium. And before I go too much further, I need to remind you that these two atoms are not drawn to scale because we know that it's almost impossible to draw atoms to scale but this is just a little Bohr model to help us visualize what's going on here. Now I have a question for you. From which of these atoms would it be easier to remove an electron? So we have hydrogen and we have helium. Well, one thing that we notice is that helium, as it turns out, has two protons there in the middle. We have two atoms with the same number of energy levels, but the helium has more positive charge in the middle. As it turns out, it would be uh, much easier to remove an electron from uh, hydrogen than it would from helium. You know, helium has so much more positive charge, so it's a lot harder to take an electron away from helium than it would be from hydrogen. Now, what does this uh, tell us? Well, it tells us that the greater the magnitude of the charge, the greater the attraction. So since we have two protons here, it's going to be really difficult, almost impossible, to remove an electron from helium using normal chemical means. On the other hand, with just one uh, uh, proton over here, it's relatively, or at least much easier, to take that electron away from hydrogen. Now let's take a look at another example. We have two other atoms. We're going to take helium, but this time we're going to compare it to lithium. And once again, my question is, from which of these atoms would it be easier to remove an electron? And once again, we see that helium has uh, two protons in its nucleus. Lithium has three protons in its nucleus. But notice we have something else thrown in here. We've added a second energy level to lithium. And as a result, that outermost electron is much farther away than these outermost electrons in helium, which means that the protons aren't able to exert as much of a pull on that outermost electron. So guess what? It's going to be easier to remove an electron from lithium than from helium. Now, I'm kind of fond of saying that, you know, in chemistry, we don't talk about the protons much. We talk about electrons. Uh, chemical reactions are all about electrons. And I'm also fond of saying that one of the only jobs that the protons have in an atom is to keep the electrons from flying away. And so as we can see here, it's a lot easier for those electrons to fly away, or at least the outermost electron to fly away in lithium than it is in helium. Well, what do we learn from this example? Well, this time, it's not so much the charge that makes the difference, it's the distance. And so we learn here, the greater the distance, the lower the attraction. So here we have a fairly high distance to that electron. So as a result, that outermost electron can leave much more easily or be removed much more easily. Now, these two examples help us to illustrate something that we use quite a bit in chemistry and physics. It's called Coulomb's Law. Now, if this equation looks intimidating, don't worry too much about it because in AP chemistry, you're almost never, and possibly never, going to be asked to actually calculate a numerical value for force. That's what F is in Coulomb's Law. You just have to know how it works, okay, what the ideas are behind Coulomb's Law. F is an attractive force between two charged particles. Now, K is a constant. We're not going to worry about what that constant is in this course. Q the Q1 and the Q2 represent the magnitude of charge of each of the two charged particles. So for example, in a nucleus that has two protons, like helium, the charge is like a plus two. And an electron would be a minus one. Whereas in lithium, we have a plus three, since there are three protons, trying to attract a, a minus one. Now the D is telling us the distance between the two charged particles. Okay, so the greater the distance, the lower that force is going to be. So I want you to notice that there are two factors at play in Coulomb's Law. 
It's the Q, which is the charge, tells us that the greater the charge, the greater the force. And the D, which is the distance, that tells us the greater uh, the distance, the lower the force. So we're going to use this trend here to help us make some predictions over the course of AP chemistry. Now, now let's go back to the, the two atoms that we had up here on the screen earlier, helium and lithium. Now, if we think about what's happening over here in lithium, we have this outermost electron, which we said earlier is going to be able to leave a whole lot more easily than is the case with lithium over here. Well, what's happening is these two inner electrons, those core electrons, as we might call them, are repelling each other, which is what electrons do. Now, those two inner electrons are basically uh, repelling each other, and they're, they're creating kind of a shield. They're shielding this outermost electron from the attractive force of those three protons in there. Now, in chemistry, this is something that we call shielding effect. And shielding effect is basically an electrostatic repulsion of core electrons, which allows valence electrons to be removed much more easily. So we can see that there is, you know, these two inner electrons are repelling each other. So that's shielding. There's kind of a shielding effect there so that this electron can be pulled away or sneak away a lot more easily. Look at helium. Is there any shielding at all? No, because those outermost electrons, well, there are no core electrons to, to have any shielding effect at all to speak of. Now, let's take a look at this here. This is a periodic table trend that we learned in uh, first year chemistry. You know, the more energy levels an atom has, the greater the shielding effect. And we know that as we proceed down the periodic table, we have more energy levels. And so we can say that the farther down the periodic table you go, the greater the shielding effect. And this has a direct effect on something we call first ionization energy. Now this is something that we did learn in first year chemistry. First ionization energy is the energy that's required to remove the very last electron, that very last valence electron in an atom in its gaseous form. And so if we were to write an equation for first ionization energy of, oh, let's say lithium, well, we'd have to have lithium in its gaseous form. I know that looks kind of funny because lithium is normally not a gas, but that's just what, how this is defined. And we're going to remove an electron, so we have an E minus there as a product, and then what's left over? What's well, going to be lithium in its cation, or its plus one form, where it's a gas. Now, if you have any other element, we would just replace the symbol for that other element uh, for the lithium there. So if it were sodium, we'd put an Na in place of the Li. It works exactly the same for every element. Now, you might remember that first ionization energy has a very interesting trend. If we look at the trend that goes on here, we notice that hydrogen starts, you know, fairly low, and then helium goes way up. And every time we add a new energy level, like we do for lithium, well, the shielding effect increases substantially. So that causes the first ionization energy to drop like a rock. Look how low lithium goes. It drops very significantly. And then, as we add protons, well, we're increasing the positive charge, the, the Q of our nucleus, which makes it harder to remove the electrons. And so that's why the ionization energy goes up as you go to neon. And then, as you add another energy level, when you go to sodium, well, you know, the D uh, goes up, and so it drops it again very significantly, and it, the process just continues. This happens very, almost rhythmically. That's why we call it a periodic trend. It ha happens periodically. Once you get from argon to potassium, it drops again. So we can see how this trend proceeds across the periodic table. Now, I'd like for you to notice a couple elements specifically here. We have lithium, which we've already talked about a little bit, and then we have neon up here. These two 
atoms both have two energy levels in them. But I want you to notice the difference in their first ionization energy. Lithium is somewhere around five electron volts, whereas neon is well over 20, looks like about 22 electron volts in its ionization energy. So my question is, why is it over four times more difficult to remove an electron from neon than from lithium? Well, based upon what we've learned already, hopefully we can figure it out. Here are some diagrams of lithium and neon, and of course these are not drawn to scale like I said earlier, but they have the same number of energy levels. What's the factor here? Is it the Q, the charge, or is it the D, the distance? Well, I hope you can see that, generally speaking, it is the Q. It's the charge. We have 10 protons in here that are trying to hold in those two energy levels. We're over here in lithium, we only have three protons trying to do essentially the same job, trying to hold in uh, two energy levels as well. Now, this is an illustration of what we call in chemistry effective nuclear charge. So we had shielding, which is the number of energy levels, but here this is effective nuclear charge. And this is a measure of the proton's pull on the electrons in the electron cloud. So as you can see, neon, since it has 10 protons, it has a much more effective nuclear charge than lithium would with only three protons. And so if we go back to the idea of first ionization energy, we can see that there are two factors in play here. The first one is the shielding effect. And so as we go down, we have more shielding effect. And since there's more shielding, it's easier to remove that last electron. So we say that first ionization energy decreases as we go down the periodic table. And of course, conversely, we'd have less shielding effect as you go to the top, and so it would increase the first ionization energy. It's a whole lot uh, more difficult to remove an electron from helium, for example, than it is from xenon or from radon down here at the bottom. Now, if we're going left and right, we have this other effect, and that's called, uh, that's called effective nuclear charge. As we go to the right, we have more protons that we're adding in, so it's going to have a greater effective nuclear charge, and it increases our first ionization energy. Remember back to that diagram we had. As you go across the table, those dots steadily got higher for, uh, for ionization energy. As we go to the left, of course, it's going to decrease because we have less effective nuclear charge. There aren't as many protons holding in those, uh, those electrons, those energy levels, so it's easier for those last electrons to fly away. Well, we have some very complex ideas here at play. We have effective nuclear charge and shielding effect. We have Coulomb's law. I hope I was able to simplify these for you, and I hope you learned something about chemistry and why first ionization energy has the trend that it does. If you learned something, please give me a thumbs up. Hope you subscribe to my channel. I hope you uh, follow through on AP Chemistry here. It's a very rewarding course. And I hope to see you again on my uh, chemistry channel where we can learn some more chemistry together.